From the opinion pages of the Wall Street Journal, this is Potomac Watch. New Jersey Senator Robert Menendez says he will not resign and uh, expects to be exonerated in court despite being indicted on Friday by the Justice Department on three felony counts of bribery, honest services fraud, and extortion. What is the political fallout for the United States Senate and that Democratic seat in New Jersey? Plus, two new polls heighten Democratic concern about President Biden standing with the public and chances of reelection. Will more such polls cause the president to rethink his decision to run for reelection? Welcome here on another edition of Potomac Watch. I'm Paul Gigo editor of the editorial page of the Wall Street Journal. I'm here with my colleagues, Kim Strassel and Kyle Peterson. Let's talk first about Senator Menendez. have to say the indictment is a doozy, man, complete with details about envelopes of cash, gold bars that found at his home, a Mercedes-Benz car, and emails that suggest knowledge of what they were doing. And it's going to be interesting to see how they can explain that away at trial. Now, of course, the senator is innocent until proven guilty. He said in a statement that the DOJ is criminalizing what he called normal constituent service and discussions related to his job as chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Kyle, before we get to his defense, what's your impression of the facts? The facts are pretty ugly. They were talking about $480,000 in cash that was found at his residence, stuffed into envelopes and hidden in clothing, closets, and a safe. The photographs of the gold bars, as you mentioned, one section of the indictment says that Menendez performed a Google search for kilo of gold price which is a bit amusing. The difficulty is that the Supreme Court has been narrowing the effect of these kinds of laws, honest services, fraud, and so forth. And so the question getting to trial, I think, will be whether Senator Menendez took something that can be construed as an official action on behalf of these constituents, the people who were apparently sending him money and other goodies. And that, I think, is going to be the argument, because it is true that constituent service may involve writing letters to people or trying to intercede in some dispute that a constituent is having with the federal government. And the difficulty for prosecutors, I think, is trying to make the case that Menendez did something that went beyond that kind of behavior. And don't forget that Bob Menendez, this is his second go-round. He was accused a few years ago of interceding in a dispute with Medicare that a physician friend of his was having, and that was deemed to be apparently not proven as an official act because he ended up with a hung jury in that case. Let's listen to Senator Menendez in a press conference on Monday explain where he stands. The allegations leveled against me are just that, allegations. For anyone who has known me throughout my 50 years of public service, they know I have always fought for what is right. I recognize uh, this will be the biggest fight uh, yet, but as I have stated throughout this whole process, I firmly believe that when all the facts are presented, not only will I be exonerated, but I still will be the New Jersey's senior senator. For 30 years, I have withdrawn thousands of dollars in cash from my personal savings account, which I have kept for emergencies and because of the history of my family facing confiscation in Cuba. Now, this may seem old-fashioned, but these were monies drawn from my personal savings account based on the income that I have lawfully derived over those 30 years. I look forward to addressing other issues at trial. Kim, do you think he withdrew the gold bars from uh, his Mercedes. bank account over the years? Uh, uh, the Mercedes. <laughs> it's an interesting defense, I have to say. You got to do what you got to do. But in the indictment, it says that actually there was, I think, evidence of fingerprints on the gold bars of the businessman who was uh, providing the gold bars, allegedly. So that's going to be interesting to see how he explains that one. Of course, he also said he played the Latino card, the race card. He said it's in a statement on Friday that it's not lost on him that the people are rushing to push a Latino out of that seat. Of course, Menendez is a 
Cuban-American. That's really the last refuge of a scoundrel, it seems to me, in this case. I'm not saying he's guilty. I'm not saying anything like that. He deserves a fair trial. But to play the race card is uh, unpersuasive as a defense. Yeah, well, a little bit more just on the facts, as you mentioned. I mean, I think actually some of the DNA and fingerprints were found on some of the envelopes of cash, which in my mind actually makes his argument about withdrawing it from banking accounts, maybe even tougher to hold up just because if that was the case, why are other people's fingerprints all over your envelopes? And also, it'll be interesting because the feds are going to have the ability to go back and look at his banking records as part of this, and they'll be able to see withdrawals and stuff. This is kind of a straightforward process these days. So we'll see how the facts of this holds up. He's also made the case And this gets to what Kyle was saying, that the prosecutors here don't understand constituent services, i.e. what senators and House members often do for the people who they represent in their state or their district that they might call and intercede in things. This is what makes public corruption cases sometimes difficult because it isn't necessarily showing the side we're talking about, the money there. It's showing that something was given in return from the official that crossed the line that was taking an official act that you wouldn't otherwise have taken unless you were given said bribes. And prosecutors have had a lot of difficulty making those stand up in court. I agree with you. He has made a number of comments suggesting that he is simply being targeted. He said on Friday that this was a result of of anti-Hispanic sentiment. He said that this was about people rushing to judge a Latino. But it's very interesting because you haven't seen members of the Congressional Hispanic Caucus stepping up, really, to make that case. In fact, Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez was on TV this weekend saying that this looks very grave, very bad, calling on him to step down. Let's listen to that, Kim. We've got a clip of her, so let's hear her in her own words. The situation is uh, quite unfortunate, but I do believe that it is in the best interests uh, for Senator Menendez to resign in this moment. As you mentioned, consistency matters. It shouldn't matter whether it's a Republican or a Democrat. The details in this indictment are extremely serious. They involve uh, the nature of, of not just his, but all of our seats in Congress. And while, you know, as a Latina, there are absolutely ways in which there is systemic bias, but I think what is here in this indictment is quite clear. And, um, and I believe it is in the best interest to maintain the integrity of the seat. Kim, there you are. Uh, <laughs> she is uh, calling for him to resign. Of course, she's not in the Senate. She's in the House. And you have others, however, in New Jersey in particular, two members of Congress in New Jersey, at least two, Andy Kim and Josh Gothheimer, Democrats calling for Menendez to resign. Phil Murphy, the governor who defended him during the last go round of an indictment, now calling him to resign. And yet Democratic senators are going back on the innocent until proven guilty position, which is certainly fair enough under our laws. Why are Democrats in New Jersey, so many in the House, and even Phil Murphy eager to have him run out of town before he gets a trial? (laughs) Well, I think there's a couple things. But the biggest part, I think, was touched on slightly by AOC, that the integrity of the seat, which is another way of saying that (laughs) they don't want to lose that seat. Now, look, obviously, Democrats have a strong lock on the state, but there's always the opportunity that you could have a moderate Republican come in, potentially. And Democrats already have a very tough election cycle in the Senate next year. So this is another little bit of upheaval. What they'd like to do is if Menendez were to resign quickly and quietly, they would be able to install somebody who'd already begin to start campaigning and get everything up in place so that they'd have a better chance of retaining hold of that seat. I think the other thing that has been, I think, attractive to some Democrats who are now willing to throw Mr. Menendez under the bus, as it were, is it's been an opportunity for them to say, look, see, look, you know, all you Republicans claiming the Department of Justice only only goes after Republicans. The, the Biden team is weaponizing DOJC. Look, in fact, they went after this guy and, and it seems to be a solid case. And so I think this is just convenient for them. I'm not suggesting that's what drove this prosecution, the politics, but the politics is very good for Democrats who want to try to lower the heat on those focusing on, for instance, Trump indictments. Mm-hmm. 